Welcome back to my video series investigating the OKDo E1 board featuring the NXP LPC 55S69 microcontroller. This week I want to show you an important technique that I use in my embedded code to make my software more robust. And to show you this I'll introduce the UTIC or the MicroTIC timer. Let's take a quick look at the datasheet for the part and we can find that it's designed as an ultra simple ultra low power timer. If we look here at the block diagram in the reference manual, we can see it's a very simple 31 bit counter with a dedicated UTIC clock, which is a one megahertz free running oscillator inside the microcontroller. Well, with a one megahertz clock and a 31 bit counter, this can give us a delay time from a few microseconds right up to 35 minutes and 47 seconds. The timer has a repeat mode or a one-shot mode and can generate a delay of up to 31 bits and generate an interrupt, the UTIC interrupt, when that time period has elapsed. So as always, the tutorial starts in MCU Expresso. I'm using version 11.1 .1 today and let me start the IDE. So let me create a new project for the OKDo E1 board. As we know, it's based on the LPC 55S69 SDK. Next, and I'm gonna name my project LPC 55S69 UTIC. I want to add the UTIC timer to my project and I can add the driver down here, UTIC. And that's the project complete. I'm just going to click finish here. MCU Expresso has created the shell of a project. It's given us a very simple template main. We initialize a chip, print hello world, and then spin in this loop. Well, this is a demo project. So of course I want to print F U tick demo. And we will wait for the timer to complete, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So we're going to wait for two seconds. Great. Well, I use the UTIC timer to guard while loops. So I'm gonna add this while loop here. And of course, if we run this code, the software will get into the while loop. True is always true and will spin in this loop forever. And it will seem that our code has hung. Well, often we don't just while true, but we'll while and wait for a status flag to be set. Maybe it's a master transmit complete flag in the I squared C, or it's the PLL lock flag and we're waiting for the lock to happen. And that's fine when the hardware is working reliably, but if we never get the lock or we never get the transfer complete flag, our software will hang. So I like to guard these while loops with a timer timeout. Let me show you what I do. And I need to add the header file for the UTIC timer. So that of course is ash include and the file name for the header is fsl underscore utic dot h. Okay, and we can see that over here in the drivers when we built our project using the new project wizard, it added this utic library here. Now I now want to exit my while loop after a two second delay. So I need a global state variable that will tell me when that delay has expired. So I'm going to create a Boolean global variable named G global B Boolean tick. And we'll set that to be false uh, to begin with. Well, in my while loop, um, I'm going to test for that flag now. So, um, well, we want to see if it's not set. So G Bool tick. 
Now we're going to spin in the while loop until g b tick is set to be true. Well, we're going to use a u tick timer to set that after two seconds. And just to instrument our code, let me add a printf after the while loop so that we can test and see when we've completed that while loop. So we'll just add a little status message and we'll say done. Okay. And now here are the three very, very simple steps that we need to take to use the UTIC timer. The first is related to clocking, of course, and as this is an OKDo E1 project, we need to set the clock to not use the external crystal. Let me go into the clocks tool. You can open the clocks. And just for simplicity, I'm going to use the internal 12 megahertz free running oscillator for my project. So I'm just going to set as the default functional group this boot clock free running oscillator 12 megahertz. So now our project will use that internal oscillator. Okay. We see that here, free running oscillator 12 is the clock for the whole of the system. Now the UTIC timer has a dedicated one megahertz free running clock. And we see that here, it's currently inactive. So let me select it here. and make it enabled. Okay. That's now enabled the clock, but we also need to attach it to the UTIC timer. So again, we can click it here and make that enabled. And now the one megahertz clock is running and connected to the UTIC timer. Well, as always, we'll update our code. Okay. MCU Expresso clock config tool would generate the necessary code. Let's have a quick look and see what's happened. So in the board clock config .c, in the function free running oscillator 12 megahertz. Here we see at line 88 that the syscon clock control register has a bit set to enable the free running one megahertz oscillator. And then here at line 92, the syscon clock control register has another bit set to enable the free running oscillator onto the UTIC timer. So that's step one of setting up the UTIC timer. Next thing we need to do is to initialize it and configure it. So let me go back to our main. And as always, the SDK driver has an init function, and this is UTIC in it and we have to say which UTIC timer we're going to initialize and it's UTIC 0. So that's done. And now we have to configure the UTIC timer. I want a one shot, one time timer that I can just run and it will interrupt me in two seconds time. And we can do this with a function called UTIC set tick. So let's do that here, u tick set tick. Of course, it takes some parameters, and the first parameter is the timer reference that we're using, u tick zero. The second parameter is a configuration parameter that says whether we want a repeating timer or a one-time timer. I like to use a one-time timer, and there's a constant for that, k u tick underscore one time. We see that MCU Expresso highlights that in blue now. It's been recognized. The next parameter is the number of one megahertz clocks we want to wait. Well, I want a two second delay, so I need two million clocks. And we'll set that up here, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's two million clock cycles. And the final parameter is the callback function it's a function that we want the UTIC timer to take us to when the timer elapses. And we'll write that function. And that's a function that I'm just going to name UTIC callback, all lowercase. 
Great, well that was the second thing we need to do. And the third thing is just to write our UTIC callback function. Let me do that up here. So this is a very simple C function. It's void, it's named UTIC callback, it doesn't take any input parameters. And here it is. We're going to do two things. We're just going to print f that we've got into the function. Always like to have a printf in my uh, interrupt service routines, but I always take them out when I build a release version of the code. There we are. And then the final thing to do is just update our GB tick variable. So we'll say GB tick is now true. When our code runs, we'll set up the U tick for two seconds. We'll spin in this while loop, just waiting for the tick to occur. We'll get into the callback. Callback will set GB tick to be true. This loop will finish and we'll print F done. Well, let's see that in action. I select a project, I build it. All of our changes are automatically saved. Compiler runs, generates our output ELF file. And let me now download that to the board. Watch carefully, I'm gonna run the code. We'll see the semi-hosted messages come up in the console window. There'll be a two second delay before we see the tick message printed from the callback function. Welcome message, tick, and we're done. Well, there we are. That's my very brief introduction to the UTIC timer. And the reason why it's necessary is if I search the project that we've created for the word while, in this project, we can just see the number of while loops there are in the SDK code. And this is very common in embedded code. If we look in the drivers, we see in I squared C that we have these while loops whilst we're waiting for you know, a pending flag to be set. And anytime there's a problem with our real hardware, some noise prevents the PLL locking or some noise on our I2C bus prevents the state machine working correctly, we might just find ourselves hanging in one of these while loops. Well, I hope you enjoy these tutorials. And if you do, then you can support me by sharing them, liking them, and subscribing to my Embedded Pro YouTube channel. Come back next time, and I'll be back to the Weather Station project. Thanks very much. Goodbye.